Okay, I finally got the chance to try out Isaac Sim 4.5 and so many things are so much easier in 4.5 than in previous versions. So I just had to share that with you and I'm going to show you how to set up some sensors today to make it work with ROS2. So if you are looking at the documentation and you see this red banner across the top, this is the older version of Isaac Sim. So previously in one of my videos, I used 4.2. Now I'm switching to 4.5 because it's so much easier. So if you see the red banner, you wanna to move to the newest version of Isaac Sim instead, which is 4.5. Now, this is the Pegasus simulator. I came across this when I was looking for drones for my project. And I wanted a model that was already set up by someone else for obvious reasons. I didn't want to have to build one myself. So I found out about this Pegasus simulator. I actually haven't used this personally, but they have a quadcopter asset available that you can download. And so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And I'm going to use that in Isaac Sim and set up a LiDAR sensor and a camera sensor and show you how to work with ROS2. So Go to the Pegasus simulator, go to extensions, then Pegasus, then simulator, then assets, robots, and then you'll see flying cube and iris. So iris is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to download this iris.usd file to my computer. And this is the asset that I'm going to load into Isaac Sim. Great, so this is the folder where I downloaded everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the Isaac Sim selector. This is the app selector. And I'm starting it this way so I can show you how to make sure that the ROS2 bridge is enabled. So you'll see this ROS bridge extension, make sure ROS2 bridge is enabled. Usually I do this in a Docker container but I'm not gonna do that today just for the sake of showing you how to get things up and running if you're running uh, ROS2 natively. Okay, so this is the basic scene. I'm gonna go ahead and add two things. I'm gonna add a ground plane and a physics scene. And now I'm gonna to go to file and then add reference. And this is where I'm going to pick up the original iris.usd. So I have the finished model already. So this is the original one, so I can show you the whole process. So this is a very bare bones model. There's no LiDAR sensor on here and no camera sensor on here, but I want those for my project. So that's what I'm going to add. And I'm gonna show you how to make them ROS2 enabled. Now, before I do that, I wanna show you what happens to your model if you don't have the ground plane and physics scene. So when you start the simulation, you'll just see your model fall into infinity. And this just means you need to add the ground plane and physics scene and keep them active. Okay, great. So let's go down to the Isaac Sim assets and I'm gonna pick up the XT32 LiDAR and move that around on the iris body. And I'm also going to add this RealSense camera right in front of that LiDAR. Okay, I'm going to deactivate the ground plane and the physics scene one more time. And start the simulation again. So notice that the LiDAR just hangs there and the body of the iris drone just falls away. So we actually want all the sensors to move with the body. So we're gonna move those sensors to the body primitive of the iris. Okay, so now when I deactivate those again and hit play, all the sensors move together. That's what I wanted to see. Even though that seems like odd behavior, I just wanted to verify that they were moving together. All right, so we have our sensors, but now we need them to be ROS2 enabled. We want the ROS2 sensor data. So we're gonna go to tools, robotics, 
ROS2 OmniGraphs and create our clock graph. So in previous versions of IsaacSim, you had to do all of this on your own, and now they're giving you these pre-built ROS graphs. So in the context for any ROS OmniGraph, you'll have this domain ID. That's your ROS domain ID. So you want to make sure that you are using uh, a ROS domain ID that you know it's mapping to your stuff. This is a ROS2 specific thing. So now we need to set up our ROS2 OmniGraphs for the LiDAR and the camera. So I'll go back to that same menu and click RTX LiDAR. And now I need to get this LiDAR primitive. So remember I moved the LiDAR to the body primitive and it's XT32 and there is the camera type. So that's what I want to attach it to. I changed this frame ID to map, but I actually want it to be world. And I'm also going to select point cloud so that I get a point cloud published as well. Now here I have this context again. So uh, the domain ID is important to set because for ROS2, everything can be picked up by anything else with the same domain ID. So I was actually picking up somebody else's uh, ROS topics. So if you right click on a graph and click open graph, you can see everything that it's created for you. Now you used to have to set these all up on your own. So you would have to look at the documentation and then physically build the Omni graph yourself for every sensor. And now in 4.5, they're just giving it to you right in the tools menu. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for our RealSense camera. And before I do that, I want to show you how to add a second viewport. So in this viewport, we're actually going to select the camera view and see from the camera's perspective what it's seeing. So it's pretty hard to tell right here if the camera is actually working. So I'm actually going to go find a Rubik's Cube asset down here in Isaac Sim Assets. Can't remember where to find it. I think it's props. Okay, perfect. There's the Rubik's cube. So I'm going to add that and I'm using this to verify that the camera is actually viewing what I think it should be viewing. And so you can see the viewport on the right hand side. That's the camera's view. That's the real sense camera's view. Now that we've verified that the real sense is working, let's continue and make sure that we add our OmniGraph for the camera. So tools, robotics, ROS2 OmniGraphs, and we'll add a camera. I might need to double check that this is the correct primitive. I can't quite remember, but I'll show you how to verify if you're getting the ROS data that you want towards the end of this video. And I'll provide a chapter guide so you can skip ahead to that if you want. Okay, now let's make sure that our data is getting published to RViz so that we can visualize it. So remember to start the simulation and then from RViz2, we're going to add by topic, and I'm going to add a point cloud. Okay, fantastic. So we can see that we are getting the simulated data from ROS2 that we expect from this LiDAR sensor that we just added. So I'll make this a little bit more visible. Now let me show you how to view the camera. So 
For this, I went to Isaac Sim Assets and I opened one of the environments from here. I believe this was small warehouse or shelving warehouse or something like that, but you have a bunch of options here. So I loaded one of those first. And then what I did after saving my previous uh, drone was go to file, add reference. And I added the Iris USD file, which dropped my drone right in here into the simulator. Now I noticed some interesting behavior that confused me a little bit and I had to go figure out this rigid body enabled and disable gravity setting. So notice the camera disappeared when I started that simulation. It wasn't attached to the right uh, or it was having gravity act on it when it shouldn't have been. So I unchecked rigid body enabled and I checked disable gravity for the real sense camera. And this is an indicator to me that maybe my primitives are a little messed up, but I'll show you that again, just so you can see it. So rigid body enabled here, disable gravity. Okay, let's open our viz again. And let me show you the camera frame. So I'll add by topic again, and then it was RGB and camera. And now you can see that this is the view from the real sense. This is the camera view that you're getting. So I'm gonna to toggle quickly back to the simulator and I'll rotate around so that you can see the direction that that camera is facing, just so you're convinced that that's the right camera image. And then I'll toggle back to Arvis again. So that is a pretty easy setup compared to how it used to be. And I was so excited about this, how it worked in 30 minutes that I just wanted to share that with you quickly in a video.